Morning Lava Shell. Welcome back from our East Live Yango channel. I'm Alison and I will be your host for today. And today we are going to visit Myanmar celebrity. And you guys probably know Gordon Ramsay, don't you? Uh, he is a celebrity chef. And today we are visiting, well, now we are visiting the person is a Burmese kind of, kind of Burmese Gordon Ramsay. And his name is Oye Win, but he is probably uh, he is well known as Mr. Shaggy. Well, now Mr. Shaggy is uh, really popular as a jet in uh, Burmese version of Mr. Chef, Master Chef, and now he he is also famous for his. Uh, uh, successful businessman in Yangon, Myanmar, who own very fine restaurants, so many very uh, restaurants in Myanmar, and yeah, I'm very excited to visit him and about his story and his current life in Myanmar. So, let's go. Firstly, I would like to shout out for Mr. Mikhail Kramarov, who is an advanced member of our membership program. I'm really, really thank you so uh, thank you, thankful for your help and appreciate it. I'm really appreciate for your help and support to our channel. And now, yeah, I'm driving to Mr. Shaggy house. So let's go. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us today. And the first question is, why do you choose this area to interview? And can, could you please tell us a bit about this area in Yangon? Well, I'm not going to explain about this area because uh, once I reveal it, everyone wanted to come. It's like a gem. This is, this is just showcasing the beauty of Myanmar. What is the beauty of Myanmar? Our country is in, it's blessed with nature. And here it's just showing the blessing, the element of water, beautiful trees, different type of trees, the greenery. And I find the magic from this place, the energy coming to me. And hopefully this energy will reflect in this interview that we can do a fantastic interview. Mr. Shaggy, I'm very interested in hearing more of your stories. I heard that you love Myanmar in very young age and you have lived in many different countries. Well, I'm not going to repeat after with so many interviews I've done, but what I want to explain is, yes, I was born in Myanmar and I had the fortune and the blessing because my father were diplomats, so I used to, I would travel with them around the world, uh, Israel, in, uh, Sri Lanka, Italy, England, um. Switzerland, travel around with him. So. Let's say, I was born in Myanmar and was made overseas, especially in Switzerland. Mm -hmm. So I'm born in Myanmar and made in Switzerland. Oh, this is very interesting. So let's say I'm a hybrid. You become successful businessman in Switzerland, but you choose to come back to Burma, so please tell us why. You see, I didn't, I, let's say I, I was not successful in the beginning in Switzerland because I started as a cleaning guy in Wendy's. I'm sure that if you have if you have Google or you look at my YouTube in uh, TEDx mm -hmm. uh, 2019, Myanmar, TEDx, it's explained a little bit of my lifestyle. Yes, I make my way up from a cleaning guy to become a successful, uh, let's say, a bar owner in Switzerland. Mm -hmm. My bar was quite famous, it was called Underground, and it, for three years I ruled the night. Now. Being in bar owner might have all the gloomers, beautiful ladies, drinks, being the highlight. But after three or four years of success, I thought I was lost. Then uh, my wife decided to move me and my daughter back to Myanmar to give her this experience of Myanmar experience. I think that was the best thing that ever happened to me. Coming back to Myanmar and rediscovering myself who I am. And I discovered I was not made for bars, although it was successful, a lot of money and all this. I thought that 
how do I use this beautiful element we have around water, trees, grass, weather, and value at me. That's when I became a farmer, a cheese master, a baker, and a butcher. And the story of Shakis has continued using all these elements. That's why I discovered, because Myanmar, for me, if, it, if I have to do live this dream in Switzerland, it would take me 10 lives. In Myanmar, within two decades, or one decade, I could have really lived that beautiful experience. So Myanmar is still, for those, it's going to be, you know, it's not an easy road, but it's, it's, a, it's a country of dreams mm -hmm. and failures. There are more failures than dreams here, but if you dream big or small, this is a country where you can do something. Well, at least that's what I did, and I, was, I don't regret. If I have to live a second life again, I'll redo it again. You seem very proud of your uh, farmer's heritage. So can you please tell us what are the best things, some of the best things about living in Myanmar? That is, that's a very difficult question because I was, like I said, from a young age, I left Myanmar. And when I come back, frankly, I didn't know about Burmese heritage. Oh. So I just started discovering at a young age of 12 and onwards about Myanmar culture, language, etc. Uh, let's see. The beauty of Myanmar, we say heritage means about traditions and all this. And I'm, I'm quite a maverick person. I, I'm a, I try to break rules and regulations and always think out of the box. So heritage, for me, I discovered as I go along. But what I like best about Myanmar is, is the potential of it. Mm -hmm. And as I discovered every potential, how to make bread, how to make cheese, how to make ham, how to grow vegetables, then, I, then what I start to understand is, each time I go to a region, working together with the people of the land, I learn the heritage from them, their old methods. And I apply my new methods, and in, in between we find solutions. And that's what makes that magic, because it's a give and take. So as I go along living in Myanmar, I'm learning its uh, uh, agricultural heritage. Besides, everyone talks about the pagodas and uh, the history. Uh, I'm not a historian, I'm not an archaeologue. I'm a farmer. Yeah. I'm a butcher, I'm a baker. So for me, it's all about the dynamics of the biodiversity of the pigs, the cows, the seeds, the tomatoes. That is for me, Myanmar's heritage. It's the food heritage mm -hmm. that I've been learning. And I'm, I'm still learning. So that's what I'm very proud of. Each time I discovered a Myanmar tomato, that is a heritage breed. Or a chili, that is Myanmar. And with that chili, how do I make it into a Tabasco? How do I make a sauce? That is more important for me, the heritage. I'll let the archaeologues and the historians do the Myanmar heritage. I'll, I'll stick with Myanmar food heritage. All of us know you as a jet in Master Chef show, but sometimes you are feeling a little bit hard on Burmese contestants. So contestant. Contestant. <laughs> contestant on the show, and some people react negatively to that. So do you think Burmese people were not ready to do that kind of show? Good question again. So, I have two motives in my life. No easy day. Easy day was yesterday. Another one is fail, fail again, fail better. So, in a show, first of all, it's a reality show. Mm -hmm. So we are here as judge to get the maximum audimat people to watch it. So to do that, we have to put some drama. That's part of the show. That's why the show. So it's not only about cooking. So if you see in Master Chef, there'll be one judge who's not a cook. There'll be one judge who's a cook. And I'm between a cook and a judge. So my job, number one, is out of that contestant to find a gem and make him first place. And his journey should not be easy. Easy journeys don't, you don't become a champion. It's a marathon. So Master Chef is not a short run distant running, it's a marathon. 
So each time we have the ups and downs, that's when I came and played, to uplift them, and when they are bad, to say to them straight into the eyes, it's bad. Although, and then, if it's good, it's excellent. We have to put the drama emotion. So, of course, the public will take me sometimes in the wrong way, but that's part of the risk. When you, what's important in life is, when you've decided to do something, you do it in heart. Whoever criticizes you, because you know in your heart you, what you do is right, at least for yourself. The rest, I cannot judge for them. So, and that's what makes Master Chef uh, people wanting to watch. Yeah. Okay. Because if I'm only the good guy, no. So you need the good, the bad, and the ugly in Master Chef to be a successful judge. So whoever is going to take my place, he has to have that three elements: the good side, the bad side, and the ugly side. So the good side is when you are selecting and giving all the merits. The bad one is when you telling him to go out of the show and eliminate him. And the ugly side is when you throw food into the rubbish bin. <laughs> so, so that is, that's what we make, good, bad and ugly. We make a good master show. Yeah, I've show. seen it several times. Too. Okay, that's part, that's part of the show. So I have heard that you have a very high quality of food that you serve. And has it been a little bit hard since the price of everything has gone up? Yes and no, because 50% uh, uh, of Sharky's product is grown by ourselves. So we cut uh, literally the middleman out of the equation. Mm -hmm. the, cr the crisis in Myanmar is the connection between farmer and consumer is the middleman. And that's where the middleman puts up the profits and all this. And now with the recent uh, events in Myanmar, of course, I'll be wrong to say that prices have gone, the guys have gone 50, almost to 100%. So it has become very difficult for most Myanmar food too. The simple reason is Myanmar food is price sensitive. So you're gonna sell Moinga between 800 to 1,500. The moment you go beyond that, consumers say it's too expensive. But the prices are increased. So the cost of doing a monga, I'm just talking ingredient cost, has climbed almost double. So if the food cost, what we professionals say, was 30, it's now 60. When you reach that beyond the 50% of food cost, it becomes redundant. You're losing money, number one. Now, how do you survive? You start decreasing the quality of your ingredients. Not the same fish, not the same sauce, and ingredients quality goes down. Everything goes trickle down. So it's very hard nowadays to be to to have a successful restaurant, especially in local food. So I think we are being challenged a lot here. And how do you do that? It's going to be hard. What I've always emphasized is when you go to a doctor, have you ever negotiated the price of your injection? No. Never. Yeah. You want, if you have, you want to go to the best doctors. And when people say, yeah, your food is it's just expensive, I say, yes, but still cheaper than the doctor. Mm -hmm. Because if you eat well, you don't have to go to the doctor. First of all, I'm your front doctor. Then you go to the real doctor. If I make some mistakes here, like not giving quality food, then you have diarrhea or you have uh, for vomiting, then you go to the real doctor and then get you treated. So we are the first, uh, let's say, first level doctors, and then you go to the, so food is almost like medicine. What we're giving to our consumer is not only about food, it's about health, it's about happiness, it's about, it's about journeys. We're giving dreams. At the same time, we're getting what the Myanmar call called kudo. So I'm not very Buddhistic, I have to admit that. Uh, we might not just to say that in the, in the interview. But what I get my kudo is by giving good food, by giving you good health. That is my philosophy of food. So it's true that nowadays we are going into, uh, let's say, troubles, water, uh, hard times. But like everything, it picks down, it picks up. That's life. It's a cycle of life. And we're in a cycle of downside, and there'll be the up cycle. Because I believe in Myanmar. Most of our audience live in West, so do you think there is one 
particular verb stages that were, that can become popular like uh, part time or part time or uh, time green curry become popular in wow. see although we are neighbors Thailand and Myanmar Myanmar cuisine has not penetrated the world market yet you don't see it that often there are many reasons and one of the reason is most of the cook in Myanmar when they're cooking because of the price sensitivity, they could not work with the best ingredients. They try not to highlight, unless you're eating at home. Home cooking is much better than most restaurant cooking. Mm -hmm. But they are successful restaurators. I can mention Yangon Tea House, Kotet, that has highlighted Mwenga and put it in the map. He's another food pioneer that is doing something for Myanmar food. And uh, not only that, he's giving the whole experience with his uh, beautiful restaurant that he opened in Golden Valley and showcase where Myanmar food can go. So if you are more potes, more like me, and more younger Myanmar, younger chefs, I'm right now, I think I'm the older chefs. We need the next generation of younger Myanmar chefs believing in Myanmar cooking, using the ingredients, fusion. Maybe it's those who have come back from Dubai, say, look here, I'm not going to go and do Western dishes. I'm going to Myanmar, but I'm going to learn what I've learned in Dubai, Qatar, or Hong Kong, bring it in, using the experience and highlighting Myanmar. Because Myanmar has all the ingredients needed for cooking, because different temperate zones, different regions, different ethnicity cooking. This country has potential. It takes, like I said, 80% is already here. Nature has done us. Nature has given me another 80%. It takes that 20% of what we chefs have to take that 80% and to make it to 100%. So it's that 20% sometimes that's missing me as long as we don't do that 20%, nature is there, and we're not benefiting that bounty of nature that Myanmar has. And this is what Sharky does. We take sea salt and make it into the best sea salt. We take tomatoes, make it into bad tomato sauce. We take Myanmar pigs and make it into Myanmar ham. We take beef and we dry age it. It's all Myanmar. But all this has been done by nature. We just helped it. And that is Myanmar. So we do need a next generation of younger chefs, many the Quartets, the Mias, the Simons, who are from Pansodans, that try to highlight Myanmar cooking and bring it up to another level. It can be fine dining, it can be food street, but with, with, with consistency and with style and freshness, just like what the Thais do. So we all know Myanmar is facing the difficult time right now. So Mr. Shaki, will you, do you think, or will you stay in Myanmar or will you leave? That's a very sensitive question right now, if you answer it, and, and I will say normally no comment, but my question is, I'm not going to leave. I'll tell you why. Right now you have different fractions with different beliefs, causes, and I always believe in the middle road. And what we do as chefs, we don't serve food to a specific type of people. Our food has no boundaries, no ethnicity, no religion. What it is, is, is food, clean, healthy food that serves. And I believe that that philosophy is to bring people back again. And I do believe that we're, we're right in a juncture and we have to overcome it. That is the political part that they have to do it. What we are doing as chefs is to our part, to bring the beauty of food and bring, trying to bring around the table people together. If I can do as a chef, whoever is sitting around and bring the beauty of food and that fuse can diff diffuse tensions and bring love and happiness, I'll be more than happy and cook for free for everyone who wants to eat as long as we go in that path. This is what I do, and that's what I want to do. That is why I want to stay in Myanmar, because there be a moment, if I, if I can play that role, I'll be more than happy to do it. Thanks for answering my questions, Mr. Shaggy. So please tell one thing they, they all should know about Myanmar. Ah, I cannot tell much for everyone, but I can tell for myself. Myanmar has been good to me. Nature has been, Myanmar nature has been good to me. I use it and try to give that 20% to the max I can because 80% is already there. 
So Myanmar for me is a country of dreams. It's a beautiful country. Uh, it's just, you, you get speechless when you go to certain regions of the country. The beauty, the people, the food, even it's not, like we say, reach the international standard like Thai, but it's real. It's with the heart. It's not perfect. What is perfect? So I do believe, hopefully, if times come back again in good times or bad times, don't write off Myanmar because Myanmar will come back again. Thank you. So today we had a great time interviewing Mr. Shaki, who has very positive positivity, uh, especially in this kind of negative time. And yes, I hope you all like this in enjoy this video and if you like this video you will also like this video and this video too so see you in the next video